your guide to fennel. Fragrant and flavorful, this herb has a distinct licorice taste. Originally from the Mediterranean region, fennel can now be enjoyed everywhere in a variety of dishes. It's rich in dietary fibers and vitamins, and each part of the plant, bulb, leaves, and seeds, is totally edible. Common fennel, grown for its seeds. This type looks more like a dill plant. Florence fennel. This variety has anise-flavored leaves and bulbous stems. It's the most commonly grown fennel and sometimes is actually mislabeled an anise. As well, both its pollen and seeds are used in cooking. Bronze. Similar to Florence, except that this type has bronze-colored leaves. Before getting started, keep in mind that fennel's ideal temperature for germination is between 60 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Here's how to start your seeds. Step one, start your seeds indoors about four to six weeks before you plan on setting them outside, usually after the last frost date. Step two, plant your seeds about an eighth or a quarter of an inch deep, 0.3 centimeters to 0.6 centimeters, then cover them with soil. Fennel needs darkness to germinate. Step three, when starting your seeds outside, you'll want to leave four to six inches, 10.1 to 15.2 centimeters between the seeds and 24 inches, 61 centimeters between rows. Step four, when your plants begin to bulb, thin your fennel to be about eight to 12 inches, 20 to 30 centimeters apart. Note, transplants that have been started inside will need a well-developed root system before they can be set outside. This minimizes the risk of shocking your plants. It prefers rich, loamy soil with a pH of 6.5 to 8. Ideally, their soil should be well-drained and moist. Your fennel will need about 1 to 2 inches, 2.5 to 5 centimeters of water per week, either by watering or from rainfall. Just keep in mind that when there is too much of a fluctuation between wet and dry soil, your fennel's stems may split. Typically, fennel thrives best in full sun, but grows best in cooler temperatures. When it becomes too hot, the stalks can become woody and can bolt. Ideally, their air temperatures should be between 50 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 to 23 degrees Celsius. When it comes to nutrients, your fennel plants will need moderate amounts of nitrogen, but they won't need too much phosphorus or potassium. Note, you can cover your fennel's bulbs with soil, which will prevent them from turning green and helps them develop a stronger flavor. Once the bulbs develop, you can apply three tablespoons of a nitrogen-based fertilizer for every 10 feet, three meters of row. As well, you can apply one inch, 2.5 centimeters of well-composted organic matter for every 100 square feet, 9.2 meters squared, and then work it thoroughly into the soil. You'll also want to control weed growth when your fennel plants are young because they will compete with your fennel for nutrients and light. To control weeds, simply apply a mulch made from straw or lawn clippings. This will also help maintain your soil's moisture levels. Transplanting best practices. You can transplant once your seedlings are about two inches, five centimeters tall, setting them six inches, 15.2 centimeters apart. When you're planting, make sure you don't disturb the roots because it can cause your plants to bolt. Before you transplant though, you'll want to harden off your seedlings by gradually getting them used to outdoor conditions. Find a sheltered spot outside where you can put them every day for about a week. The sun, wind, and different temperatures will toughen up your fennel plant and prepare it for outdoor survival. Companion plants do's and don'ts. Fennel is not a companion for any vegetable plant in your garden. It has a fluid that prevents the growth of beans, kohlrabi, and tomatoes, 
Also, if it's set too close to dill, the plants might cross-pollinate due to their similar plant families, and their resulting hybrids can develop a strange taste. You can definitely still plant your fennel, just try to keep it away from the rest of your vegetable garden. The good news is that fennel attracts hoverflies, ladybird beetles, parasitic wasps, and tachinid flies. These predators are very helpful against pests that might infest your other plants. Growing structure options. Raised beds. The soil in raised beds has much better drainage and warms up faster, meaning you can start planting earlier. They also allow you to concentrate your soil preparation to a smaller area. As an added bonus, raised beds make for a more comfortable gardening experience. Containers. These are a great option if you've got limited space in your garden or on your balcony or terrace. Make sure your pot is big enough to accommodate the roots and that it has holes in the bottom for water drainage. If it doesn't drain well, diseases like root rot can infect your plants. Open field. You'll want to check your soil for its fertilizer needs, as well as any possible disease infestation before planting your seeds or transplants. When using this option, typically you won't have to water your plants as regularly as you would container-raised plants. Aphids. These tiny pests come in a variety of colors, green, black, red, light orange, or yellow, and mainly feed on the undersides of leaves and stems. What they're actually feeding on is the sap in plants, which ends up causing the plants damage. Aphids also leave behind a sticky substance called honeydew, and they are a pest that's known to spread diseases. Aphids can be tolerated by most plants when their numbers are low, but if there's a lot of aphids, they can stunt a plant's growth and cause a plant's leaves to turn yellow and fall off. Here's what to do. For the most part, plants can handle mild aphid infestations. But if they're found, a strong jet of water from a garden hose will wash them off the plants. Spraying plants with water should be done early in the morning so that the plants can dry off during the day. Sticky traps, neem oil, insecticidal soaps, and horticultural oils are also effective against aphids. Just be sure to follow the application instructions on the packaging. Oftentimes, you can also get rid of aphids by wiping or spraying the leaves with a mild solution of water and a few drops of dish soap. One variation includes adding a pinch of cayenne pepper. Soapy water should be reapplied every two to three days for about two weeks. As well, you can try to attract beneficial insects like lady beetles, hoverflies, and lacewings, all of which are important aphid predators. Make sure to check all transplants for aphids before planting. And keep in mind that aphids aren't very mobile, so it's not uncommon to find one heavily affected plant surrounded by plants that are fine. If this is the case, simply remove and destroy the infected plant. Cutworms. These are gray worms that curl their bodies around the stem of a plant and feed on it, which causes the plant to be cut off just above the soil surface. When their numbers are high, they can cause severe damage to the garden by causing plants to wilt and die off. Cutworms feed at night and hide in plant debris during the day, and they prey more on nutrients plants, seedlings, or young plants since their stems are more tender. There are a number of different types, but the most common are red-backed, dark-sided, and dingy cutworms. Here's what to do. Hand pick any cutworms from the plants after dark, when they're most active. Also, keep a three to four foot buffer of dry soil along the edge of the garden to make it unattractive to cutworms. As well, remove plant residue to help reduce egg-laying sites and get rid of weeds, which can host young cutworm larvae. Be sure to till the garden before planting, which helps to expose and kill any larvae that might be present. Also, use compost instead of green manure, since manure might encourage egg laying. As well, 
Try placing aluminum foil or cardboard collars around the plants to create a barrier, which will stop cutworm larvae from feeding. Simply place the collars around the plants so that one end is pushed a few inches into the soil and the other end is several inches above the ground. Adding a layer of mulch will also help to prevent any cutworms from reaching the soil surface. And natural predators like wasps and ground beetles also help to control cutworm infestations. Finally, try spreading diametaceous earth, essentially a soft powder made from the bones of tiny aquatic creatures around the plant's base. This creates a sharp barrier that will keep cutworms out. Thrips. These are tiny, needle-thin insects that are black, brown, or light yellow in color. Thrips suck the juices of plants while also attacking the leaves and stems. Affected plants will have rough bumps, discolored speckles, or silvering on their leaves. Those leaves can then become distorted, twist, and fall off the plant. As well, thrips can spread many diseases from plant to plant. If the thrip infestation is severe enough, it can kill plants off entirely. Here's what to do. Lots of thrips can be repelled by sheets of aluminum foil that are spread between the rows of plants. Be sure to also remove weeds and debris from the garden bed after frost and avoid planting next to onions, garlic, or cereals where large numbers of thrips can build up and then transfer onto other crops. Also, use reflective mulches early in the growing season to deter thrips. Spinosad and neem oil can also be used to spot treat heavily infested areas. Finally, release commercially available predators like minute pirate bugs, ladybugs, and lacewings which are especially effective in greenhouses. For best results, make releases of these predator bugs after first knocking down severe thrips infestations with a spray from the garden hose. Finally, watering plants from above is another effective way to prevent a thrips infestation. Harvesting. To harvest fennel seeds, cut the umbel-shaped seed heads after they have turned brown then store them in a paper bag so that they can dry. Fennel leaves can be used at any stage of the growth process, while fennel pollen can be harvested by shaking the blooming flower heads into a plastic bag. If you've grown Florence fennel, this variety should be harvested when its base is less than four inches, 10.1 centimeters across, and feels firm to the touch. Use a knife to slice the bulb from the root. Storage. To store your fennel, simply remove the stems and wrap it in plastic. It will keep for up to a week in the fridge, but we don't recommend freezing your fennel as its deliciously distinct flavor will be lost. The feathery foliage of fennel is used fresh, while its bulbs and stalks can either be eaten raw or cooked. As well, when fennel seeds are dried, they make a great addition to many different dishes.